Hey everyone, Dr. John Barbieri here, a board certified dermatologist and acne expert. In this video, I wanna go through some of my initial thoughts about this Balasher report about benzene being found in benzoyl peroxide containing products. This is important because benzene is a human carcinogen. It can increase risk of cancer. And so it's not something that we wanna see in anything that we're gonna be using to treat acne. Now what made Balasher decide to look into this is that benzoyl peroxide is a molecule that potentially can degrade into benzene. So it's not that like what we see with some other personal care products where benzene was getting into them through the manufacturing process. Here it's that benzoyl peroxide itself, the molecule, the active ingredient might be unstable and could break down into benzene, which then could contaminate these products and put people at risk of harm. What Valisher did was they took a variety of benzoyl peroxide products. They incubated them at a relatively high temperature, 50 degrees Celsius, for a period of four to 18 days. And they showed that when you expose these benzoyl peroxide containing products, these conditions, most of them developed very high levels of benzene in them. Now, the first thing that comes to mind is most people aren't storing benzoyl peroxide in these conditions. Now, this may replicate what it's like to store benzoyl peroxide at room temperature for long periods of time. Uh, but what they don't really have in this report is much data about benzoyl peroxide just off the shelf or when stored at room temperature, what most of us are doing. And so that's something that we really need to see more of the data on. They mention in the report that many of the products did have some levels of benzene detectable at baseline, but they don't talk about specifically, what are these numbers? Is this 0.001? Is this two? Is this 10? They're not particularly transparent about what these are. And I'd love to be able to see more of that data so we can understand it better. In addition, they mentioned that several of the products had no benzene at baseline, and it'd be great to know which of these they are. Is there something about the way they're formulated, whether they're a wash or a cream or a gel? Is it something about other components that help stabilize the benzoyl peroxide that make these products potentially safer? This would be really useful for us to be able to advise people on what benzoyl peroxide products are most safe to use. So these are some really key limitations to the report where we need more data to understand under kind of more normal conditions, does benzoyl peroxide break down to, into any or meaningful levels of benzene? This is something that we really don't quite know yet until we get more data from Balachroy. I'm guessing they probably did testing like this, but from the report, it's a little bit hard to know what they found or what exactly they did. So I hope they release some more of that data soon or other people conduct those studies so we can better understand it. The report then goes on to describe that certain kinds of molecules can help potentially stabilize benzoyl peroxide, and that's really good news. It means that this problem, there may be some solutions, whether it's changing the way that benzoyl peroxide is stored, whether it's in water, glycerin, and other kinds of stabilizers uh, in the formulation, and potentially using some of these other molecules to stabilize the benzoyl peroxide. It seems like it should be possible to create benzoyl peroxide products that have a lower risk of degrading into benzene and having this potential risk and issue. However, given some of the limitations of, of what we know right now, really, for me, the main take home points at this time are definitely benzoyl peroxide. We don't wanna be exposing it to high temperatures. Uh, we wanna make sure we keep benzoyl peroxide products stored in a cool place in our home. We don't wanna put them in a warm place. We don't wanna leave them in the car or expose them to high temperatures. We definitely don't want to keep them for probably a long period of time. I would imagine the longer that benzoyl peroxide is sitting on the shelf, the more risk it has to degrade into benzene. So that benzoyl peroxide bottle from five years ago, probably we don't want to be using that. We probably want to be using fresh new benzoyl peroxide, not keeping it for a long period of time. We need to do more research to understand how we can better stabilize benzoyl peroxide to keep it safe because this is a really important acne fighting ingredient and we want to be able to continue to use it for our patients. So how can we formulate it in terms of whether it's a wash, cream, or gel? What can we put into it to help make sure it's stable and doesn't break down into benzene? We need more data from Valisher and from others to understand, are there risks when stored under appropriate conditions? Certainly, when we store it at high temperatures, it develops very dangerous levels of benzene. But if stored appropriately under normal conditions, or even if we refrigerate it, might we be able to prevent the development of benzene? It might be able to continue to use these products safely. We need that data to help inform our policy making decisions. And then we need to think about what are alternatives that we can use instead of benzoyl peroxide. Can we use something like azelaic acid? Can we use things like chlorine dioxide? Can we use these kinds of techniques to help replace benzoyl peroxide in our acne treatment regimens? So really right now, we have more unknowns than anything else. Certainly this report needs to be taken seriously. We definitely don't want benzene 
in our benzoproxide products. And we need to get some more data about what really happens when we use benzoproxide under more normal conditions. Are there any products on the market right now that seem to be more stable than others? And what can we do going forward when we're formulating benzoproxide products to ensure that they have high stability and that they're not gonna break down into benzene? So this is really an evolving topic. I think we're gonna learn a lot more in the coming days and weeks and months. I think we shouldn't overreact too much without more information at this point, but I do think this is a concerning issue that we need to make sure gets addressed. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, pop that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the latest in acne and rosacea. In addition, share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, see ya.